Call now. 300 cities now that are considered sanctuary cities in the United States. So these are cities that decide that federal law does not really count all that much, that they can decide what immigration law is and is not. Well, there are some who are not standing for this. We're now joined by Representative John Culberson. He's chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee that oversees the Justice Department, and he has some ideas for how to get these sanctuary cities to fall in line with federal law. Congressman, thank you very much for calling in. Buck, it's good to be with you. So please tell us what the proposal is to get uh, that, that you're putting out there uh, that will force sanctuary cities to, well, stop being sanctuary cities. Well, Buck, this is a, a fairly this is a actually a fairly novel concept. It's one that uh, Congress has had the authority for some time, but we rarely had to use it. We never had a president that would so deliberately and systematically ignore the law, ignore the Constitution, just haul off and send, do executive orders that are just clearly illegal and unconstitutional. So the founders entrusted the Congress, Buck, with the power of the purse. Uh, the Constitution, Article One, Section 9, Buck, tells us that no money may be drawn from the Treasury except by appropriation. And this uh, uh, committee that I resisted going on, because I'm a fiscal conservative, I didn't want the job. My starting answer is no to all new spending. I discovered once I got on the committee and became a subcommittee chairman that we have these tools available to us on ongoing basis. They, this does not work. What, uh, uh, what I am going to do, what I am doing with the Department of Justice to pressure them to cut off federal law enforcement funding to sanctuary cities the pressure that I'm applying to them, Buck, it comes from my authority as chairman, and I don't need an amendment. I don't need to pass a bill. I don't need anyone's approval. This is authority vested in the Congress by the Constitution and then assigned to the Appropriations Committee subcommittee chairman by the by this, the rules of practice in the, in the Congress for, for these many, many, many years. But no one really had to use it before. And I I discovered this last year, Buck. I'm the I I used this authority to pressure ATF to drop the uh, uh, ammo ban on 223 ammunition last year. That's why the 223 ammo ban disappeared so suddenly and mysteriously. Is I used this uh, incredible leverage I have as chairman to block their internal funding, and that's what I'm going to do to the Department of Justice. I put them on notice that as your chairman responsible for oversight of the Department of Justice, I'm notifying you that if you do not cut off federal law enforcement grant money to these 300-plus sanctuary cities, that I will block your internal funding at the Department of Justice, your ability to move money from one part of the department to another. Uh, I'll block parts of your spending plan. And that's authority I have as chairman entrusted to the Congress, delegated to the subcommittees of which I chair this law enforcement one, and it's a novel concept, Buck, so and it's a little hard to explain. It took me a couple minutes here, and I appreciate you giving me the time. Hard to get it into a sound bite, but it's a powerful right, but, tool. I'm, gonna, I'm staying on their air hose. That's the way to think about it. Right. Uh, uh, but I want to ask you I want to ask you what the pushback, if any, has been from the Justice Department. I can assume that Attorney General Loretta Lynch is not, not fond of your, your newfound interpretation or your, your new strategy, your new tactic here. So is there a way that uh, – how are they responding to it, and is there a way that they can try to either nullify or get around this authority you have as chairman on this committee? Well, no agency ever has uh, bucked. They, they never – in the past, when this authority has been used, it's been used in narrow, targeted circumstances where the agency was was pursuing a policy that, the, that did not – uh, it didn't follow the law or was doing something that uh, the Congress didn't want them to do, and it's typically done on much smaller things. But we've got an absolutely out of control uh, uh, chief executive. This White House is doing things that no president's ever tried to do. So I was compelled, for example, last year when they attempted to ban 223 ammunition, I was very successful because the ATF director uh, is a professional law enforcement officer. Uh, and they responded, and they dropped the ammo ban within less than three working days after I explained what was about to happen to them. Because I, I, actually... I have to be honest with you, Congressman, I didn't even hear about this ammo ban. What was this supposed to be? And the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, which is also under my jurisdiction, had issued uh, legal guidance, which is actually more dangerous than a rule, uh, Buck, because it's uh, legal guidance from the chief lawyer of the agency. This is a sneaky trick the Obama administration's figured out. 
Why go through the rulemaking process? Why issue an executive order? We'll just issue legal guidance from our top lawyer and say, all the people that work for this agency, here's what we want you to do. Here's how we want you to interpret the law. And they issued legal guidance last spring that said to, to, to all 223 ammunition uh, is essentially going to be banned, that we are uh, we have the authority to ban 223 ammunition because it can be used in a pistol. I mean, one one type of pistol that costs like $1,500, they, uh, they were also going to ban a whole bunch of other types of ammunition. And, of course, that's what General Gates did at Lexington and Concord. They went after the gunpowder and the and the bullets, you know. So I uh, called in the head of the ATF. I said, I'm going to have to block your internal movement of money. I'm going to have to veto parts of your spending plan unless you drop the ammo ban. And we went back and forth. It took about an hour, but we worked it out. And within less than three working days, ATF just dropped the ammo ban. So this power works, and it's something I have right now. And I knew that, for example, today I think we are actually receiving the detailed spending plan from the Department of Justice. It looks like about three or four New York City phone books. And it's every single function in the Department of Justice. They've got to show the Appropriations Committee we're spending money on this office and to do this and that. And that's what I've got the authority to go in and say, no, you can't do that. And so the, uh, the, the, the way this will work powerful. is if 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 the sanctuary cities or rather the Department of Justice doesn't crack down on sanctuary cities, you will cut federal funds, law enforcement funds under your authority as chairman of this committee that would otherwise be going to some of the agencies in these cities. Is that how it works? Well, it's actually, Buck, that's why it's a little tricky, and I appreciate the time on the on the show, and I'll try to keep it short and sharp. But what, what it actually is going on is like a, any big company like IBM, they want to spend money on a – they lay out a budget for the year, and they've got a comptroller that decides what they can spend money on and what they can't. That's what I'm doing. My job is to be the taxpayer's comptroller. I'm per, there to protect the Treasury, and these agencies have to give me a detailed spending plan, and I have the authority to approve or disapprove of individual items in that spending plan because – we got a detailed appropriations bill, and that detailed bill gives me this authority. So I will. I, what I've done is tell the Department of Justice, you know, you, they, they issue these grants. These actual the sanctuary cities get their law enforcement grants from the Department of Justice, Buck, and they apply. They're starting to apply right now. DOJ is already receiving applications from cities and states and counties all over the country for these law enforcement grants. We know there's at least 300 sanctuary cities. And I've told the department, you must deny these applications. These people are not eligible. If they want federal law enforcement money, enforce federal law. And if you do not deny their applications, then I will go into your spending plan and disapprove of specific items at headquarters. I don't want to hurt the law enforcement officers in the field. I'm not going to obviously interfere with with, uh, with the uh, FBI or the you know folks that are doing their job in the field. But let me tell you, headquarters is going to have a bad year unless they start cutting off money to these sanctuary cities. And that's powerful motivation. I can do it right now. I don't need to wait for a bill. I don't need to wait for an amendment or approval. And uh, we've got 12 months, 11 months left with this White House, one of those dangerous periods in this country's history. There's no telling what this guy is going to do. So I'm the new chairman. These are the new rules. You want federal law enforcement money? Follow federal law. All right. There's a new chairman in town. His name is Representative John Culberson. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much for calling in and telling us about your strategy to get these uh, sanctuary cities to fall in line. I appreciate it very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Buck. I appreciate it, and we'll keep you posted. Absolutely. Please do. When our water heater broke down last 